and emergency facilities functioning. All underground storage systems have been shut down due to contamination from the probe's waves. Red alert. Red alert. Hey, Doc, we got a few in here. Yeah. Red alert. Red alert. Scotty, how long is this bay? About 60 feet, Admiral. Can you enclose it to hold water? I suppose I could. You're planning to take a swim? Off to the deep end, Mr. Scott. We've got to find some humpbacks. Humpbacked people? Whales, Mr. Scott. Whales. About 45 to 50 feet long. About 40 tons each. You're really going to try time travel in this rust bucket? We've done it before. Sure, slingshot around the sun, pick up enough speed, you're in time warp. If you don't, you're fried. Would you prefer to do nothing? I prefer a dose of common sense. You're proposing that we go backwards in time, find humpback whales, then bring them forward in time, drop them off, and hope to hell they tell this probe what to go do with itself. That's a general idea. Well, that's crazy. You got a better idea? Now's the time. Your computations, Mr. Smith? In progress, Admiral. Uhura, get me through to Starfleet Command. Red alert. I'm picking up a faint transmission. Red alert. I think it's Admiral Kirk calling. On screen. Satellite reserve power. No. That only the extinct species, humpback whale, can give a proper response to the probe. Do you concur with this opinion? Stabilize. Emergency reserve. Starfleet Command, do you read Go ahead. I'm hearing you. Starfleet Command. That's a meet me. We're going to attempt time travel. We are computing our trajectory at this time. At this time. At this time. Get him back! Get him back! Ready to engage computer, Admiral. What's our target in time? Late 20th century. Can you be more specific? Not with this equipment. I've had to program some of the variables from memory. What are some of the variables? Availability of fuel components, mass of the vessel through a time continuum, and probable location of humpback whales, in this case, the Pacific Basin. And you programmed all that from memory? I have. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. Hamlet, Act One, Scene Four. No doubt about your memory, Spock. Engage computers. Prepare for warp speed. Shields, Mr. Chekhov. Shields, I. May fortune favor the foolish. Warp speed, Mr. Zulu. Warp two. Warp three. Steady as she goes. Warp four. Warp five. Warp six. Warp seven. Warp eight. Sir, heat shields at maximum. Warp nine. Nine point two. Nine point three. We need breakaway speed. Nine point five. Nine point six. Nine point seven. Nine point eight.
Mr. Sulu. Mr. Sulu. I sir. What is our condition? Sir, the braking thrusters have fired. Picture, please. Earth. But when, Spock? Judging by the pollution content of the atmosphere, I believe we have arrived at the latter half of the 20th century. Well done, Spock. Admiral, if I may, we are probably already visible to the tracking devices of the time. Quite right, Mr. Spock. Engage cloaking device, Mr. Tigger. We are crossing the Terminator into night. Homing in on the west coast of North America. Admiral, I am receiving whale song. Put them on speakers. Admiral, this is strange. The song is directly ahead. It's coming from San Francisco. From the city? San Francisco. I was born there. It doesn't look all that different. Set us down in Golden Gate Park. Aye, sir. Descending. We'll divide into teams. Commanders Uhura and Chekhov are assigned the uranium problem. Yes, sir. Dr. McCoy, you, Mr. Scott, and Commander Sulu will convert us a whale tank. Oh, joy. While Captain Spock and I attempt to trace these whale songs to their source. I'll have bearing and distance for you, sir. I want you all to be very careful. This is terra incognita. Many of their customs will doubtless take us by surprise. It's a foregone conclusion. None of these people have ever seen an extraterrestrial before. This is an extremely primitive and paranoid culture. Chekhov will issue a phaser and a communicator to each team. We'll maintain radio silence except in emergencies. Those of you in uniform, remove your rank insignia. Commence landing procedure. Aye, sir. Don't tell me you two are fighting again. I thought you made up last night. Why are you two always fighting? I like the way she fights. Oh. Anyway, I said to her, if you think I'm going to spend $60 for a damn toaster oven, you're out of your mind. What'd she say to that? <laughs> I think she... Did you see that? No, and neither did you, so oh, shut up. I didn't see nothing. 